This is Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. Hosted by Pastor Matt and Jessica Stahlbaum. Morning Breath starts now. Welcome to Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. Also known as In the House on Mondays, we are recording Morning Breath and uh, we're doing it because of the stay at home that we're all facing right now. Uh, we have studios, and we're still able to record there as an essential uh, business, as a church. Uh, that's definitely part of that. But we thought for Mondays we would just begin to record at home and make this available on Facebook to watch. And so if you're interested, you can check this out on Facebook. And uh, you can check out everything we do on our East Coast app, on the East Coast Facebook page, and our website, ECCC. US. I'm Matt, and this is Jessica. Hi, guys. Happy to be with you today. We are also, we're on the radio still, but we're also doing these on, via video, yeah. too, just trying it out. And we are at home, as is everyone in the world. So <laughs> glad to be at home with you, wherever you are, at your home. Yeah, let's keep it real for a sec. What What is, uh, what's the deal? Like, I mean, how are you handling being at home? What are the challenges that you're facing right now? Right now, my challenge is trying to get our video where I have my green plant in it. <laughs> We're going to get that. Yeah, I want the really? green plant and not the alarm and not the, on the wall. not the security system. <laughs> there we go. Um, challenges. So it hasn't been a huge difference for me. We already homeschool our kids, as people know. It's been awesome. It's been really great for me to be able to see all those years that I've been homeschooling, 10 years that I've been able to help encourage people. Because I remember first starting homeschooling when my son was five, he's now 15. And I remember how scary it was not knowing. The biggest question is what curriculum do you use? Now, those who are in public school, uh, the public school system, especially around here in Florida, has been doing an incredible job of resourcing their um, own students. But for people who are starting from scratch, what curriculum do you use? What, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you and I did a video that's on our East Coast Christian Center Facebook. No, YouTube. It's on Facebook. And too. Facebook. But it's on our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, whatever you call that. And um, so we just want to encourage people in that. So that's the same for us. Uh, definitely cooking a lot more. And I don't particularly enjoy cooking, but you do. So you're cooking more, which has been awesome. Yeah. And what else? I think, you know, yes, it's been easy in some ways, but I think it's been very difficult in other ways as well as we're all facing, you know, just the disruption of the rhythm. It ebbs and flows. Eh? Yes. I, I think, you know, it, it just the other day when we got the 30 day notice saying basically stay at home, essential businesses, I think things got a little more real for Floridians in that moment, even though we had already made essentially all of those differences in our life. We weren't sure what all was going to be uh, planned and what was going to be happening. So we were on high alert trying to get, are we are we good to go? What's going on? Where are we going to record? How are we going to stream? All these things. And, uh, you know, it's it's been ups and downs for me. My biggest up and down is how am I going to get this hair cut? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what's up with this hair? You know, uh, that's... You can't see it on the radio, but mm, it is getting long. Yeah. <laughs> So, and uh, so we're actually considering, uh, we might even put a video out um, of haircuts and painting nails and I'll paint your nails. So my nails, I have dip on my nails (laughs) and they're growing out to the point where they're like a reverse French manicure. And I don't know what to do to get this stuff off my nails. So you're going to paint my nails and I'm going to cut your hair. Yeah. And I'm the one that actually cuts all the hair in the house. I cut all my boy's hair. And so he uh, should be scared. And Jessica's never cut my hair before. So you're um, actually the one who paints Adeline's toenails too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is going to work out well for me. <laughs> Not so much for you. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is good. And and I'll tell you this, we're in Acts, the book of Acts. And what's great about the book of Acts is that so many things changed in the book of Acts for the world, uh, for Christianity, Jesus ascended to heaven And now the Christians had to be Christians for the first time without Jesus in their presence, helping them face to face. And so I think this is really good for us to read the book of Acts, because right now we are being faced with challenges we've we've not faced in my lifetime. You know, um, my grandparents faced some incredible challenges. Uh, My parents have faced uh, incredible challenges in the past. But even my parents, and as baby boomers, this is this is new for all of us. This is this is something I don't think any of us have ever faced a world pandemic, um, and with the knowledge and understanding of how these diseases uh, actually spread 
we're doing things like we've never done before. You can now combine that with technology and the ability to know every ounce of news from every corner of the world. Every second of every day. Every second of the day. This is new. Now, the world has always had problems. We're just facing it in a capacity that we have never experienced in our lifetime. So I talked to my grandma yesterday and she's in Michigan and they have had a shelter in place, which is more intense than the order that we're currently under in Florida. And um, she's alone in an assisted living facility, but they have to stay in their own little apartments. They can't um, even go in their normal social settings and stuff. And she called me because my daughter and I sent her a card and Adeline drew a picture for her. So she called to say thank you for that. And I just said, grandma, how are you doing? She's 89 in Michigan. It's not quite warm enough to open her windows yet. And so she's feeling very isolated. And she said, I really am doing well, but I've just never experienced anything like this in my whole life. And I think to hear someone who's 89 years old say something like that was like, wow, this is new for all of us and we are in it together. And how important it is to encourage one another and to reach out. And if you have grandparents elsewhere, send them letters. The postal service is still working. Thank you, postal service. Send letters, send cards, call, pick up the phone and call people right now. It is more important than it's ever been. Yeah. So I totally agree. Cool. So we're in Acts chapter five. We're going to read that. And we're going to read, uh, I'm going to read one through 21. And I'm going to read now. Perfect. Now a man named Ananias with his wife, Sapphira, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's full knowledge and complicity, he kept back some of the proceeds, bringing only a portion of it and set it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly keep back for yourself some of the proceeds from the sale of the land? As long as it remained unsold, did it not remain your own to do with as you pleased? And after it was sold, was the money not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this act of, act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart? You have not simply lied to people, but to God. And hearing these words, Ananias fell down suddenly and died. And great fear and awe gripped those who heard of it. And the young man in the con young men in the congregation got up and wrapped up the body and carried it out and buried it. Now, after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me whether you sold your land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how could you two have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. And at once she fell down at his feet and died. And the young men came in and found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear and awe gripped the whole church and all who heard about these things. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders attesting miracles were continually taking place among the people. And by common consent, they all met together at the temple in the covered porch called Solomon's Portico. But none of the rest of the people, the non-believers, dared to associate with them. However, the people were holding them in high esteem and were speaking highly of them. More and more believers in the Lord, crowds of men and women were constantly being added to their number to such an extent that they even carried their sick out into the streets and put them on cots and sleeping pads so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one of them with healing power. And the people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing the sick and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. But the high priest stood up along with all his associates, that is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy and resentment. They arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and leading them out, he said, go stand and continue to tell the people in the temple courtyards the whole message of this life, the eternal life revealed by Christ and found through faith in him. When they heard this, they went into the temple courtyards about daybreak and began teaching. Now, when the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the council, Sanhedrin, Jewish high court, even all the council of elders of the sons of Israel and sent word to the prison for the apostles to be brought before them. But on arriving in the jail, the officers did not find them there, so they went back and reported. We found the jail, jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. 
The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging on the cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were found they were furious and wanted to put him to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. <clears throat> then he addressed the Sanhedrin, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, uh, Thutius appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his fathers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people to revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if purpose, excuse me, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, Amen. Ben. All righty. Very what, good chapter. What stood out to you? Uh, definitely verse 39. But if it is of God, and it appears that it is, you will not be able to stop them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. And I just want to model how to do SOAP, which is uh, script, seek, observe, apply, pray, or scripture, observation, application, prayer. And this is the way that I read my Bible. And I've talked about this before, but I think it always bears worth repeating, especially in this time when people are home more. You may have, you should have, a lot of people do have more time on their hands. And I think uh, with the onslaught of information and news, we need to be filling ourselves up with the word of God more than ever before and worship. And so I just want to give a little example of how you can read your Bible and get something out of it every time you can walk away with a personal application every single time you read your Bible to where you're going to be excited to read your Bible. This, I promise you, before I learned how to do this, I was not excited to read. I was just like, I did it because I was, I was supposed to, you know, quote unquote, it was more of a, a obligation. And now it's, I'm excited in the morning to get up because I know that I'm going to read one chapter. I'm going to read the morning breath chapter. I'm going to uh, look for one verse to stand out, and then I'm going to get a personal application. So I'm yeah. just going to share what I did with this uh, verse. Let me say something about that, too, is I've actually been approaching the morning breath chapters with that thought more yeah. in mind than ever before of just finding one verse within the chapter. Now, we do, because this is a longer broadcast, we do bounce around the chapter and we, um, you know, we spread it out that way. But you could do this in basically 10 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah let's I did this what, in about 10 minutes. Let's hear your soap, your one verse. Yes, yeah, so my one verse was 39, which again was, but if it is of God and it appears that it is, you'll not be able to stop them or else you may even be found fighting against God. And I don't know if you can see this, but I just write a little S and I write, oh, sorry. <laughs> I write a little S and I write my verse. And then the O is the observation. So you just make observations, anything that comes into your mind about this verse, you can start with who was speaking. And so this was Gamaliel. He was, uh, he taught Moses. He was the te I mean, teacher of the law of Moses. And, um, he was sharing and he was basically talking. He, he was an opponent of the apostles and he, he was coming in at a time where all the other Sanhedrin and the Sadducees, they were wanting to kill these apostles. And so then he speaks up, even though he's an opponent of them, he actually spoke for the Lord. And he said, but if, this, if these guys are of God and it appears that they are, then they, we, we will not be able to stop them. So this is the verse. Those are my observations. Some more observations are the things that are of God cannot be stopped. And then it reminds me of this song. And I wrote this in my journal, mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah. The battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. And that is a song I believe called 
he can or you cannot be stopped. I think it's by Phil Wickham. You can Google it. It's an amazing song. We and did that at church. Yes, I love yeah, that song. It's a great song. Nothing can stand against our God. So I wrote in my observations. So then, what are the things of God? If the things of God cannot be stopped, what are those things? And I wrote the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit are the um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. All of those things are still in act. Like they, we're staying at home, but we're operating in these fruits of the spirit. Something else that cannot be stopped is the church, the capital C church, which I say the capital C church all the time because that just encompasses the church as a whole, the global church believers, followers of Jesus, not just our church. When you say the fruit of the spirit, um, it actually says against such things, there is no law. In other words, there is nothing that can truly stop the fruit of the spirit. No order, no shelter in place, no stay at home order. Nothing can stop these things. I love that. So I said, the church, we are no longer contained to a building. We have been deployed all across the globe. But this meme has been going around and it's a picture of an empty church. And it says, uh, the church is not empty. It's just been deployed. And I love that that visual picture. Um, what we have as believers in Jesus is the answer. He is the only sure foundation. He is hope. And when everything else has been stripped away, he remains. He is the only constant thing. So those were all my observations. And then my A is application. And so for me, this is personal, but hopefully that you can relate to and maybe it'll, it'll encourage you. But I wrote, in this time, do not fear. And then I underline this as my actual application. Fill yourself with the word of God. Remember that Jesus said we will have struggles in this world, but then he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. He also says we have an enemy in this world and that his mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're seeing that. And he's using this virus to do so. But then Jesus says, but I have come so that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And that's a verse John 10, 10. And so when you fill yourself with the word, because I have had years of filling myself with the word, those are the things that are able to come out. I think about an orange. When you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Orange juice. Yes. yes. And so when we are squeezed, we are being squeezed in this time. There is tension. There is um, what is going to come out when you're stressed. If the word of God is in you, then the word of God will come yes. out of you. And then um, P is prayer. And I just write out my prayers because I love to look back later and see God has answered these prayers. Mm -hmm. But I just wrote, Lord, thank you for your word. What a gift it is to have instant access to your promises. Help me fill myself with worship and the word instead of fear and worry in Jesus name. Amen. Um, I want to read this verse here. Uh, I actually, it just literally came to me at the last second. Like, um, as you were reading, I, I read this verse, Acts chapter Five, verse 15, as a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them onto beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. And I just thought about that. Peter wasn't having to touch people to see them healed. Like right now in our culture, we are social mm-hmm. distancing. We are stepping back from people uh, six feet. We feel a little weird because as Americans, we tend to shake hands when we meet somebody that we we want to tell them, hey, I like you. Yeah. Like, we can be friends. Right. We shake their hands. At least that's what I do. You know, uh, we hug friends, especially when they're in trouble. Uh, we, we're, we're being asked not to do that. You know, the Bible says that we want to lay hands on people and heal the sick. And so when I'm praying for people, I tend to want to put a hand on their shoulder, you know, I want to tend to grab them by the hand and pray with them because it's what we've been trained to do, right? It's what we know to do. But here we see in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, Peter is praying for people with his shadow, okay? God can work through through the shadow. And I just thought about that, and I'm thinking about that right now. We can cast a shadow in a lot of different ways. We can cast a physical shadow where the sun is shining on us, and you're in proximity, Six feet away, I'm six feet tall, but when the sun is low, the shadow is extra long. That shadow can go for 30, 40, 50, 60 feet, right? That can actually happen with the shadow. Um, Someone can actually Google that. How long can a human shadow be? But (laughs) you get the point. Also, we cast a shadow in social media. We cast a shadow in our emails. We cast a shadow in our texts. We cast a shadow in our phone calls. We cast a shadow in our friendships. We can cast a shadow and bring the life and love to Jesus Christ 
And God can heal people through us even. He can still use us, you know, because God wants to actually use us and the power through our actions, through our shadows, through our words. You know, one, one guy said to Jesus, if you just speak the word, that's enough for, I believe, my servant yeah. to be healed. Yep. It was the messenger of the Roman centurion. And he said, I've never seen any faith like this ever before that I can just speak the word and see you get healed, see your servant get healed or your master servant get healed. And Jesus went, wow. And so I want to encourage you, you need to amp your shadow up. Jessica said, what's in your heart is going to come out. Well, let it come out. Let it come out in your social media. You know, you can, here's the thing. Like we did, a, a we we're doing a 12 p.m. lunch hour uh, prayer time. And uh, it's been powerful. We've seen anywhere from two to 9,000 views on each of those posts. One specific post that we did on April 1st, we had some humor involved in it. We threw some joy in it. Uh, I sang uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Um, and as if you don't know, um, I have the best voice that you've ever heard in your life, especially <laughs> when I'm singing. So, of course, that went viral. Billions of people heard it. No, just kidding. But what happened was is more people watched that because it was funny. It was humorous. They got a laugh out of it. Then we sang a worship song, and then we prayed. And what, what I'm expressing there is you can put joyful videos out. You can put joyful comments out. Uh, some of my friends have said, I'm off of Facebook right now because I'm tired of I'm tired of the uh, coronavirus negativity going on. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. And uh, I, you know what you can do? You can unfollow those type of posts and those type of people. Or you can be the light of the world in the middle of this dark season. You know, Nick, he's, uh, he's actually doing our radio program right now. He's the producer. He's one of the funniest people online I've ever seen. And some of his friends, like Caitlin and different people, they're hilarious. You know, these videos bring me joy when I watch them. The, their life and, and, and love on Instagram stories and on Facebook stories and on TikTok and all the ways that people are expressing themselves, they bring me so much joy. And I laugh. And in the evening, when I'm able to watch these, I, I, a smile comes to my face. And, and I, I feel as if I'm still in their lives. And and I know that it's a blessing for each of us to be like that. So you have an opportunity to bless people. Well, that's a good point too. what you said, though, about Facebook and about wanting to stop Facebook just because you have some negative news coming out. There's going to be negative news in any avenue of news that you're getting. And so you can actually control your feed. I don't know if people know that. Yeah, you can you like can. you can unfollow. I went through remember that season like uh years ago. I unfollowed pretty much everyone and I only followed ministries like our church and um Joyce Meyer and people who are constantly putting out positive life-giving things. And so just change your feed. Like yeah. stay on and get the get the stuff that you want to fill yourself right. up with. You don't have to unfriend somebody, but you can sure unfollow them. Sure. You know, and uh that's that's an important thing to manage our social media. And our, what we're seeing and what we're viewing, I think that's really important. You know, one other thing that really stood out to me in this chapter is the next verse, they get arrested, they get locked down, and what happens is they get released, Yeah, like literally in the middle of the night. And in some ways, people are saying the church has been locked down. Where What's happening? Oh, my gosh, we've never done this before. This has never happened before, blah, 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 all that stuff. You know, we're saying, no, it's not locked down. We're just... We're released into the world. I want to encourage you to uh, do some things. I'll watch our Good Friday service this Friday on Facebook. Yeah. Watch it. It'll be at 7 p.m. and 12 p.m. We're doing a Good Friday communion service with a conversation about rest and sacrifice. And then watch our Easter service online. Um, we're doing an, some incredible things. We're doing a, a video with prayer all over our county, and we're doing a video with worship in all different places. Uh, we're, we're stretching our church, and we're going for it. Thanks for listening to this program. Uh, our, our video stream is going to end. If you'd like to follow more, our podcast is going to continue for about three or four more minutes. We love you, and we'll see you tomorrow. You are listening to Morning Breath from East Coast Christian Center, Merritt Island, Vieira, and Coco. 